For my topic, I chose to investigate anti-predator behaviors. First, let's talk about why avoiding predators is important and how successfully or unsuccessfully avoiding predators can influence fitness. We discussed the effect of a behavior on fitness as an ultimate level of analysis, specifically function. Um, and we talked about it in terms of survival, reproductive success, or reproduction by relatives. Being able to successfully escape or avoid predators may increase an individual's fitness levels by reducing risk to reproductive success or survival. However, if an individual is unable to avoid or escape predators successfully, their possible future reproductive success could be zero and they may not survive. Theoretically, natural selection seems like it should favor anti-predator behavior strongly as it increases fitness. However, as we have seen, other important factors might be at play, like energy costs to the individual or personality influences that might cause the selection of these behaviors to not be so straightforward. Some of these factors may have influenced the development of various anti-predator behaviors. The two main kinds of anti-predator behaviors are avoiding detection by predators, which is a preventative measure, and the behaviors the animal executes once an encounter occurs, which is a reactive measure. While this is not an exhaustive list and does not account for non-living predators, it does cover a large portion of common anti-predator behaviors. To avoid detection by predators, animals may blend into the environment, like cryptic matching, be quiet once a predator is detected, or choose habitats that are safer. If an encounter occurs, an animal may, be, may react by fleeing, approaching predators to gather more information, fake death, signal to predators to deter an attack, or fight back. Clearly, there are many ways animals may attempt to avoid or escape predators. Let's learn about two of these behaviors in a bit more depth. To do this, we're going to play a game called What Behavior is Behind That Door? Take a quick guess what anti-predator behavior you think is behind door number one. If you guessed being quiet for the anti-predator behavior behind door number one, you're right. Let's talk about how golf toadfish use this behavior to avoid predation from bottlenose dolphins. Male golf toadfish emit a boat whistle sound during breeding season to attract females and signal to rival males. One of their predators, the bottlenose dolphin, has been shown to orient towards this sound. Dolphins also emit various sounds, including whistles to communicate with other dolphins and low frequency pops while foraging. Can golf toadfish detect these sounds from their predators? Do they differentially respond to these sounds? How does detection of nearby predators affect sound production behaviors of these toadfish? These were all questions asked in one study that investigated this anti-predator behavior. Mainly, these researchers analyzed these behaviors on approximate level, focusing on the various stimuli that can cause immediate changes in behavior. The researchers found that the male toadfish who are exposed to the popping sounds dolphins emit while foraging, either on its own or in combination with whistles, decrease their call rate by about 50%. You can see this in the black and the red bars, specifically in the during section of the first chart, compared to the pre-section of the first chart. This decrease in call rate was also maintained for five minutes after exposure to the pops, which again is seen in the black and red bars, this time in the post section of the first chart. As you can see, the whistle noises alone, shown in green, or the control sound that they use, which is shown in yellow, was not enough to trigger this call rate decrease. This shows that toadfish can differentiate between cues that signal that a foraging predator may be nearby and other sounds. This may be an example of stimulus filtering as the toadfish are focusing on and responding to biologically relevant information. This also demonstrates the proximate influences on call behavior. Additionally, males who are exposed to the pops had higher stress hormone levels as shown on the y-axis in the second figure than those who heard the control sound. This demonstrates the effects that various cues can have on the endocrine system, depending on whether they are biologically relevant or not. 
Now that we've seen how toadfish decrease call rates to avoid detection by predators utilizing the being quiet anti-predator behavior, let's look at another anti-predator behavior. What do you think is behind door number two? The behavior behind door number two is fleeing, which is one of the reactive anti-predator behaviors. Three spine stickleback fish utilize schooling behavior as a form of fleeing to reduce predation risks. There are many factors that affect schooling efficiency, including body angle, speed, and position within the school. Schooling behavior of these fish differs between populations, specifically marine and benthic sticklebacks. These populations have been shown to school at different rates, possibly because one can utilize schooling behavior more effectively than the other. The researchers of one study aim to investigate the potential genetic influences of these behaviors and heritability of these behavioral differences in schooling. The researchers found that marine sticklebacks, shown in black, spent more time with the school, shown on the left, and took less time to join the school, shown on the right, compared to benthic sticklebacks, which are shown in red. These researchers concluded that the differences in schooling behavior are likely heritable and not due to social experience, as the fish were reared in the lab and not exposed to parental contribution. When behaviorally compared to other sticklebacks of their own population, these lab-raised fish were behaviorally consistent with their population. Additionally, when tested in a benthic marine mixed group, the individuals behave consistent with their population's schooling behavior. You've now learned how heritability of traits and proximate auditory cues can affect anti-predator behaviors and how successful use of these behaviors can increase an animal's fitness.